क्यों है Curette. Pochéos. Curette. Tête en déclin. Stop. Euh, Plarmon, s'il vous plaît. Des, un œuf et des articulations. Okay, just uh, separating the incus tape joint and then checking malleus incus first and then tape it always from top of the head eh, as usual. Ciseau. Okay. So let's go for the drilling out. Using as usual 0.7, 0.7 millimeter burr. And what I like to do, as I explained, you know, remember trying to stabilize the incus with the sucker where you drill out the drill the uh, posterior crus. Just pushing a little bit the uh, incus to stabilize the stapes <coughs> and, and underneath, like this. A peu de serum à côté, s'il vous plaît. When I feel that the, the cruise is thick and kind of resistant, uh, I like to put some saline solution on the right on the burr like this. And that's it. Oh, it's absolutely. Okay, let's go for the entire cruise. You can partially see it. All right, and now we now to measure the distance from incus to foot plate using this uh, stapes measuring rod, as you go. So I'm going to the foot plate first with the distal tip. It's, this one is running from three. 0.5 to 4.5. So I'm going to first touch the full plate, and then uh, I'm using usually the mid surface of the incus or the superior surface of the incus. And you see, the uh, third one is in front of the superior surface of the incus, which means 4.5. Okay? La ronde, s'il vous plaît. So what what we need to do now is to perform the fenestra. And now I'm using a 0.7 millimeter burr and the uh, 0.7 millimeter diameter sucker at the same time.
Okay. And same thing, I'm going to leave the diamond dust doing the job. No pressure, just leaving the, the drilling out procedure progressively. Working fine. Moving, now I think for the view will be better if I move a little bit. So that I'm not going to hide the, the camera if I move to the left. A little bit. It's difficult to avoid that, so I will move a little bit more. Just for the vision. Difficult to avoid that. So you see, I'm always starting before uh, reaching the full plate. I think it's done. And now I can use the vein graph to close the fenestra. And now we need to pre-shape the vein, which I put on the press. I like to leave it on the press when I have a thick vein graph like this. So I can leave it on the press, it, it's drying up the vein, so it helps to have a better way to introduce the vein. I'm going to use this part of the vein and it will be enough. There we go. It's quite a large one. s'il vous plaît, un 7, un 3, 7 s'il vous plaît, euh, plutôt même un 9. I'm just first trying to remove, going to remove the, the, the blood and of course I don't want to suck directly into the labyrinth so we need to be very cautious about that. So introducing it with my left hand and stretching with my right hand. So holding it, I'm holding it with uh, the sucker and I take my time to stretch the vein like this. Facing now the intima of the vein. And taking my time to stretch it correctly. I know that the fenestra is right here. And you see I'm covering completely and widely the other window. All right. Okay. So, this is the cutting block and I'm going to cut the prosthesis at 4.5 and this is the regular cost piston uh, with uh, 0.4 millimeter diameter uh, Teflon shaft. So I'm holding the loop with my left hand and cutting the shaft. And that's it. I don't remove or add anything. I measure 4.5. I cut it at 4.5. And I'm holding the shaft like this. Uh, decrease the light a little bit. So I'm holding the shaft like this and uh, you need to break the memory and trying to, de to, to, to stay uh, parallel to the shaft otherwise you break the, the loop and you dislocate the loop okay fine OK, 
Okay, so I will just introduce the shaft as usual first and then I will uh, drive the, the loop around the incus at the second step. Okay, can lift. So the shaft is in position, I need to hold the loop and pull and push the, the prosthesis anteriorly. There we go. And now it's fine, I just need to crimp the loop with the two hooks. So you need one hook to hold the prosthesis in order to avoid pushing the prosthesis within the labyrinth and the other one is used to crimp the entire part of a loop like this progressively until you feel that it's fine. And that's good enough. You don't need to close completely. All you need is to secure the stability and it, that's good enough. And looking that then for the, for the bending side. The piston should bend but not move. So that's the bending. And the vein is fine. And now the mobility from the malice is good too. Okay, I think it's, it's fine. So now I need just to reposition the flap and that's going to be okay. And I'm going to put the Mercel and that's it. Okay. It's not a very large canal, eh? but uh, good enough. Easy. Okay, fine. Thanks for watching.